All right, let's go. So the first trailer for TMNT Mutant Mayhem dropped two months ago, and I have not been able to get this off of my mind. I'm very excited for this, partly because I'm a relatively new fan to the franchise, which means this is the first Turtle film I'm going to see in theaters, but also because I'm craving so much more of this visual style that they're giving us. I first saw the teaser art for the movie when it was circulating around social media several months ago, and I thought it looks like it could be pretty good. Rise of the TMNT had given its last hurrah, and here we are getting a taste of a new vision for the turtles. It had potential, but I wanted to wait and see what the movie would really look like, because after all, these were only a couple concept pieces, and everyone knows that movies are never going to look like the concept art. It's just a part of the process. Right. Right? <laughs> well, then the trailer came out. Okay. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever looked through the concept art of a film and thought to yourself, wow, what would have happened if the story and design had gone more of this direction? Or even, what if the entire movie looked like this? I know I have for sure. I have a lot of art books and I think this about every single one that I get. And okay, I have never been happier to say this is exactly what we're being given with this movie. So, Spider-Verse brought a comic book to the silver screen. The Mitchells vs. the Machines made a sketchbook come to life. Puss in Boots' The Last Wish gave us a moving digital painting. Now, it is finally time to move the finished art direction backwards to where it began. The concept art. Ah, I keep saying these words, so let me quickly explain what concept art is, just in case anyone's a bit confused, in case you're new to the whole animation thing. Concept art's the pre-planning of a movie. You can't do anything visually until the concept art is done and you decide how the film is going to look. So when making concepts, the artist typically has a short turnaround deadline, so they'll focus their attention on the composition, the mood, and the story, and the small details of the piece are hardly ever defined, and instead are implied by quick brush strokes, textures, and blocks of color. It's actually really beautiful to look at and is a big reason why I have so many art books. <laughs> to see all the unleashed creativity, not yet bound by an official style or the fingerprints of directors. It's loose and free and I love it. And this is seen all over in the trailer. Okay, okay. We, we, got, we, got to, we got to look at some examples before my brain explodes. I'm getting so excited talking about this. Here's a few examples. Absolutely none of the lines on the manhole cover are parallel. Everything is uneven and wonky and splotched with color. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but these don't look like models. I think these are just painted in. They have character models. I'm not sure if they use them for this. I think they just splashed in with color. Uh, the textured, hand-drawn scrawl of the recording imagery, that's great. The streaks and smears and pencil lines to convey the motion and impact. At this part, the smokestacks behind Donnie are all different shaped and slightly skewed. The neon signs are generally rough scribbles with glow effects. Distant billboards, they're just, they're just scribbles. There's no detail. You don't know what's on this billboard. There's just, you just know that there's a billboard. The windows are all slanted and different shaped. The, this gate behind Raph is just fantastic. There's these rough lines all over the character models that are there in some scenes, but not all of them. Uh, the backgrounds have these sketch lines as well. And with the character models, originally I thought that they just, uh, they were just part of the model. But no, I, I think some of them are. Like there's this percentage shape on Mikey's mask. I think that's part of the model. But then there's like, every once in a while, Raph will have this like little streak on his nose, but that's not there in every scene. So do they, like, alter the model for certain scenes? I don't know. It's great. There are very few, if any, blurs used. Most of the actions are suggested, I, like I said, by pencil marks, motion lines, and smear frames. So it looks kind of like an oil painting almost, the way that they smear the color. Uh, the pupils are different sizes, which is a weird thing to say, but it's just another one of those small things that I love. <laughs> The tools on this tool shelf. Some of these might be models. Some of them are just drawn onto the thing. Like, I don't know. Did, did they just download the background file and just paint them in? Is this grease pencil? I don't, I don't know. I'm assuming this, this is a huge studio. I doubt they use Blender. But if they use Blender, they have a grease pencil tool. It might be what that is. I don't know. Uh, ooh, so the smear transitions have a very similar feel to Alexander Petrov's oil on glass animation, which if you haven't seen, you should look it up. He has this one film about uh, fishermen. I'll just throw a few clips on screen really quick, but the entire animation is made by painting oil 
on a piece of glass, taking a picture, just smearing it around with his fingers just a little bit, taking another picture, smearing that around just a little bit, taking another picture. The entire film is created with oil on glass and none of the frames are saved because he's edit. He's just kind of smitching with every single one of them. Anyways, I just wanted to say that that's what the scene transitions look like. <laughs> okay, back on topic. This scene is really interesting. So to kind of start this off, there's a tweet by Jeff Rowe, who's a writer and director. Quoting this, I love the shot because production designer Yashar Kasai, I think that's how you say that, did such a complex high wire balancing act of creating visual clarity through contrasting hue instead of value. The colors are cool and unexpected. We wanted to throw out the animation playbook on this one. And yeah, that that's fantastic. That's just what they did. So generally, it's a rule of thumb when painting to get your values covered first so that the focus areas of the image will be the first thing that the audience looks to. Your values are, if you put the image in black and white, the grayscale is value. So you can't have the character the same value as the backgrounds, that same color of gray, or else they'll almost be hidden from the eye no matter what color you make them. It's just a typical rule of thumb. So Yashar knew this. He knew the rules and he broke them. And it looks so good. You don't understand how good this is. I'm I am so in love with this one shot. So Obviously, not everything is the exact same value. There's variation in the background lighting to help each of the turtles stand out, as well as some rim light. There's some harsher shadows in a few certain areas. But still, the overall value is mostly similar. And that's, that's just, you don't normally do that. It, it's n- it would not be recommended by anyone. It's freaking incredible. I love it so much. <laughs> I'm sitting here, deadpan, typing at my keyboard, not saying a thing, and yet there are tears in my eyes. I don't even know how I'm going to make it through the movie if this is what a four second shot is doing to me. There is a lot happening here. So this transition right here, the body of the man being thrown lines up perfectly with the next scene of the car coming on screen. They both seem to be going at the relatively same speed and the gorgeous smoke effects, absolutely beautiful might I add, that help to add the illusion of a natural transition. Also, it feels more satisfying to look at because instead of watching someone being thrown off the screen and that's it, we're watching the object slide across the scene in a nice semi-circle, which is, it's good. It's like, mm, it's satisfying. My guess is these scenes either take place consecutively or the editor saw a chance and they took it. Either way, it looks great. This is a tiny thing. When Raph's sigh hits the toolbox, the sigh immediately turns 180 degrees on impact before flying back at the camera. I love this detail. No explaining why it works like this. Uh, it just does it. <laughs> Another one. When the sigh finally lands in Donnie's leg, uh, that's it. There's no sinking movement. It just stops. Like, there might be a tiny frame as it settles into place, but th- that's it. It just stops, and that added to the pause right before the reaction just makes it funnier. So, good job, guys. The smoke effects. I, I, I don't know how many times I've mentioned this, maybe once, but the smoke effect is just airbrushing and pencil scribbles. And part of the reason why I'm making this video is because my friends are probably sick of me talking about it. But if I ever mention Mutant Mayhem, I, I'm going to say that the effects are just scribbles. Everything in this movie is just pencil scribbles and it's so pretty. So I have to point it out as many times as possible. So this is kind of in the trailer. You see the little baby turtles. I think it's Donnie and Mikey. There's toy designs that have not come out yet, but they look like boogers and I want to buy them so bad. I don't normally buy toy merch, but I need these little booger jelly beans. (laughs) They're so funny. I want to touch on one more thing. It's actually the reason why I initially made this video. I haven't mentioned it yet. I've seen other people talk about this, but no one has really dug into the topic yet. And that is the character design, but not just of the main cast. Yes, I think they all look absolutely fantastic, especially, okay, especially Splinter's mullet. Whose idea was giving Splinter a mullet? I need to know. That is hilarious. But no, I'm not talking about the turtles and Splinter in April. I'm talking about these guys. So let's start with these thugs. My gosh, they are so ugly in the best way possible. I don't think I've ever seen a 3D movie approach character design like this, but if you have, please drop the movie titles in the comments. I'd love to check it out. So I've seen a few people making jabs about how off these guys look, and yeah, that's the point. It's like a caricature. 
You're supposed to squish and pull and exaggerate the faces in a way that's both unappealing and yet fascinating. So a big part of what makes these dudes so distinct, in my opinion, is the asymmetry. Because symmetry is not realistic. Like, sure, you might find the symmetry in some things, but even then it's still slightly off. Asymmetry is natural. And all three of these goons are an instance of asymmetry pushed to a ridiculous degree. And yet, since faces are naturally asymmetrical, it doesn't seem too far of a reach to say that normal people like this could exist in the TMNT world. Like this guy. See, this guy right here is actually the greatest character design for any TMNT movie. I'll show you why. His face is a pizza. Okay, hold on. Um, I'm looking at my note, and all I put here was Pepperoni Man looks like Ten Huns people. And yeah, he does. I did not elaborate on this. Back on track. I had to find out who designed them. Whose style do they go off of? Whose genius is behind this? So I did some extensive digging, pouring through articles and social media handles, following links to who knows where, until I finally found a name. It took me about 15 minutes. And that man is Woodrow White. I saw his page and immediately was like, oh yeah, we got him. Look at this caricature art. It's absolutely fantastic. You can practically feel his handiwork oozing from the frames. So at this current moment, I'm not 100% sure if Woodrow White even designed these specific characters. It's my best guess that he did. It looks like his style. But it has been stated that he did in fact work on... Let me just... Let me just talk about this. So I went back through this clip. Here's just a couple of thoughts. The models seem to be mostly intact. I don't know 3D terminology yet, but all of the textures and paint strokes and scribbles, they all stay on the designated spot on the character, okay? Except for like these three little specks on Rocksteady that just jump around the specific area. And it, it just caught my eye. I don't know how to explain it. It just adds the slightest bit of chaotic movement to a scene with very little movement. I like it. It just gives it more energy. Uh, Rocksteady's horn looks like it's got texture of bark rather than bone. And I, I really like that. Also, I think he has silver teeth. That's pretty sick. Both of the characters have all these hairs and bumps and wrinkles and scratches that make them look extra gritty. I like that. The drawings on Rocksteady's pants. I just want to point that out. I didn't notice that at first, but I just, I like the way they're painted. Okay, Bebop. Okay, okay, okay. This, this guy. This guy's design threw me for a loop when I first saw it and after multiple weeks of repeatedly just coming back and staring at it. There's two things. Either his face is pressed against the boombox and its angle is pushing his snout over a bit. Or they just purposely made his snout in the not correct perspective. And I don't, I can't understand. I can't explain why this stood out to me as much as it did. I just saw this for the first time and thought, that's not how that works. It shouldn't be at this angle and yet it is. Is it gonna be twisted like that this entire movie? Are we finally getting a big budget movie that doesn't care about things looking perfect and is going solely for the way that art makes you feel? Are we letting imperfections and asymmetry take the center stage? Is that what's happening here? Is it really? Or like I said, the boombox is pushing it a bit. I don't know. I'll wrap things up here with a final quote from Danny Dimian, who is a VFX supervisor on Into the Spider-Verse. He says, Computers do everything correctly, and you have the right perspective and geometry all the time. What's interesting about art is all the imperfections that go hand in hand with a human creating things. We have to find a way to break things. Now, Cal and Jet, who worked Viz Dev on Mutant Mayhem, had said that a better comparison to their movie is actually Mitchells vs. the Machines rather than Spider-Verse, which I understand, I agree with that. Every movie that's coming out with a more graphic style uh, seems to be compared to Spider-Verse. That being said, I think this quote still fits pretty well. Imperfection is what makes things human. In a film that relies so heavily on the computer to improve and enhance the graphics, it might look cleaner and visually stunning, but it loses something with that. And I think it loses its humanity. Because with films like that, every time you pause the screen, everything looks so perfect. Everything is so beautiful and clean and pristine. And that's, that's not a bad thing. There are plenty of movies that I really enjoy that are just marvels of technology and how far we've come. But with films like these, any time you pause the screen, you can feel the love and passion and artistry and creativity dripping from every corner. It's messy and it's weird. And that's what makes it beautiful. It's also going to drain my bank account the amount of times I'll be watching this. Thanks for watching the video!
I think this was less of an analysis and more of me spewing my thoughts into a semi-comprehensible video. This is the first thing like this I've ever made, uh, solely to keep my friends sane, because otherwise I will not shut up about this. But I think I'd like to do more things like this in the future, so stay tuned to see what happens. And if you want, drop some video suggestions down in the comments. When the second trailer pops out, I'll probably do something for it. Uh, I would like to. Also, I might even do a video talking about Rise of the TMNT. It had a huge resurgence of new fans coming to watch the series once the movie dropped, which is amazing. But I don't know. I think you could always use some more love. So I might do a video on that explaining the animation. But yeah, thanks again for watching. I'll see you guys soon.